So this is going to be the fun part. You're going to be a little creative. It might get a little silly. Don't get your feelings hurt if you get corrected. The reason why we'll correct you is just, hey, maybe next time order this. Maybe next time say that. Maybe next time be a little voiceful for here. Jamie's going to be instructing you and letting you know the way to make this a more applicable way to handle this gun and to handle a bad person in the room. And remember, the goal is is that we don't want you to have be seeing it for your first time or thinking about it for your first time when it's actually going down in real life, right? So, you and listen to how we're correcting other guys. Listen to what other guys are saying. Listen for their posture. Would that command and control you? Would you obey that, right? And this is the nature of any training. We should have covered this day one, hour one. You'll only get as much out of this as what you put into it. So train for the fight you're not yet in. When you're given commands, you better give the command. Good to go? You better give the command like you mean like you mean it. Because you're training for the fight you're not yet in. You better give the command like this is going down. And you have to you have to mentally, right? This is part of killology. It's part of on combat, right? All these things that Tinder Colonel Grossman talks about. You have to mentally, even here, on a range with simunitions and with airsoft guns, make it as realistic as you can in your brain. This guy, there is a guy in my house with a gun in the middle of the night. How in the world are you going to handle that? Sir, get down, please. Sir. <laughs> right? You you will only get as much out of it as you put into it. So make it as realistic, even in your own mindset. This is life or freaking death. When I breach that door, if I get hit, if this was real life, I was a dead man. And you got wives? And you got kids? You better train at that level. You better train at that level, even with airsoft guns. That's the intentionality with which you should undergo every single aspect of your training, all right? Yes, it's twins. Slide release, that's it. That's all it is. Here's that button on the slide release. If you need to rack it back. That's what a walk looks like. Not at me, bro. You're clearing that room. Holy cow. <laughs>12th grade students Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold murdered 12 students and one teacher. 10 students were killed in the school library where Harris and Klebold subsequently committed suicide. 21 additional people were injured by gunshots and gunfire was also exchanged with the police. Another three people were injured trying to escape. At the time, it was the deadliest high school shooting in the U.S. history. The shooting has inspired dozens of copycat killings, dubbed the Columbine Effect, including many deadlier shootings across the world. The world Columbine has become a byword for school shootings. Harrison Klebold had intended for the attack to primarily be a bombing and a secondarily a shooting. But the failed detonation of the several homemade bombs they planted in the school caused the bear to launch a shooting attack. Two bombs were set up as diversions at another location away from the school, one of which partially detonated. The motive remains inconclusive, however... They planned the attack for at least a year and hoped to have a large number of victims. 
The police were slow to enter the school and were heavily criticized for not intervening during the shooting. The incident resulted in the introduction of the IARD tactic, which is used in the active shooter situations. IARD stands for Immediate Action Rapid Deployment. Columbine also resulted in an increase in emphasis on school security with zero tolerance policies. Debates and moral panic were sparked over American gun culture and gun control laws. High school cliques, subcultures, you know, especially the goths, outcast and school bullying as well as the teenage use of pharmaceutical antidepressants, the internet, and violence in video games and movies. Explosives. In addition to the firearms, the complex and highly planned attack involved several improvised explosive devices. Harrison Klebold constructed a total of 99 bombs. These included pipe bombs, carbon dioxide cartridges filled with gunpowder called crickets, Molotov cocktails, and propane tanks converted to bombs. The propane bombs were used in the cafeteria, in their cars, and in another location as a diversion. For ignition, they used storm matches, cannon fuses, and model rocket igniters as well as timing devices built from mechanical alarm clocks for the propane bombs. During the massacre, they carried match strikers taped to their forearms for easy ignition of the pipe bombs and CO2 bombs. Harris also experimented with napalm and envisioned a kind of backpack and flamethrower. They both attempted to get another friend and co-worker, Chris Morris, who was a part of the trench coat mafia, to keep the napalm at his house, but he had refused. Harris also tried to recruit him to be a third shooter, but would play it off as a joke when rebuked. Pipe Bombs Harris's website contained instructions on making pipe bombs and Molotovs and the extensive use of shrapnel. Harris's father once discovered one of his pipe bombs. Harris's journal logged the creation of 25 pipe bombs. Klebold scared his co-workers by once bringing a pipe bomb into work. They would give various nicknames to their pipe bombs. After the massacre, two pipe bombs had been left in Klebold's bedroom. One was named Vengeance and another Atlanta, presumably after the Olympic Park bombing. shooter. What did we do yesterday? We're going through the basic fundamentals of room clearing. We went over corner fed room, left corner fed room, center fed room, right corner fed room. We got a little bit into the hallway. These different instances right here will dictate how your tactics are. If there's nobody in the room, that'll dictate how you enter the room. If there's screaming and yelling and gunshots, that's going to dictate how you go into the room. Today, we're going to recreate the Uvalde shooting. I'm going to be the shooter. You're going to come after me. Kids are screaming. Kids are screaming. Get in the room. Get in the room. Get in the room. Let's go. Get in there. They're screaming. Index. At least he took him to the plate. <laughs> Law enforcement response to active shooters pre-Columbine. 
Before one of the deadliest shootings in United States history had taken place at Columbine High School, law enforcement was trained and expected to set up a cordon or hold perimeter security while a mass shooting was taking place and then to call Special Weapons and Tactics Team or SWAT Team. SWAT would sometimes take multiple hours to muster together, get their briefing on the incident they were called to, and then to deploy to the scene. Sadly, this tactic resulted in the deaths of nearly 15 children and the serious wounding of 24 others. The deadly attack on Columbine gave law enforcement the evolutionary response that was required to better confront these types of attacks on the general populace. It's one of the biggest things that happened at Columbine. Bad tactics is how we got Columbine. Columbine is also the reason why we got good tactics. Post Columbine, when there was something that was happening, like let's say there's a hostage situation, an active shooter at a school. So, at Columbine High School, what law enforcement would do as those two idiots were walking around in here, killing people, ambushing people, setting up pipe bombs and propane tank bombs, which by the way, if the propane tank bomb would have went off in the cafeteria, it would have leveled half the school. There'd be way more casualties, but they're never really talked about very much. So pre-Columbine, law enforcement is going to surround a building in what's called a perimeter security or a cordon. They'll sit and they'll wait for special weapons and tactics. Where is your hand if you were ever special weapons and tactics? We got an active guy in here right now. How far away do you live from the nearest school? 12 miles. 12 miles. Okay. At any point in time, you can be 200 miles the other direction. SWAT typically is also roving on the streets. Special Weapons and Tactics, SRT teams, unless it's a dedicated team, like I was on a dedicated team, but we still went out and patrolled actively. If something happens, we got to get pulled in. You got guys that are on holiday. You got guys that are on swing shift, night shift, day shift, sick leave. You got guys that are on vacation. You got guys that are doing vehicle maintenance. They got to get pulled in. They got to get geared up. Then they got to get briefed. Then they got to get rolling to where the target is. So that can take sometimes between 30 minutes to hours before SWAT can appear. How fast did you guys empty a magazine yesterday when we were shooting? I mean, just, you know, a couple of shots takes one second. I mean, we could take a full magazine, 15 round magazine, and dump that thing in about three or four seconds if you're really fast. What's an hour to a shooter? It's, a, it's an expenditure of time to stack as many bodies as possible. So this bad technique of waiting for SWAT to show up and then finally make entry is the unfortunate reason for why Columbine is the best example for active shooters in America. It completely dynamically changed the way law enforcement looked at the active shooter situation. Pre-Columbine, set up the court and call in SWAT. Post-Columbine, we developed something called the Immediate Action Rapid Deployment. This was supposed to be something that all agencies from federal, state, and local would all then be in agreement of how to train law enforcement. You were gonna have a ballistic shield. You were gonna have a plate carrier, a helmet. You were gonna be issued a rifle, every man a rifle, every man a shield, so that you would confidently walk through that door Police are just people. Sometimes the most bravest of us all, we feel a little morality when, when the bullets start ricocheting in front of us. It happens. Post Columbine, immediate action, rapid deployment. IARD or immediate action, rapid deployment is a law enforcement tactic where police, typically regular officers, actively confront a developing high risk crisis. 
This is opposed to first responders acting to assemble a cordon around the crisis zone and then waiting for specialized special response units to spearhead a resolution. IARD seeks to combat crimes which are generally the purview of special response units, but where special response units may not arrive in time to preserve the lives or property of victims. IARD is partially a response to the murder-suicides where criminals attack large groups and then kill themselves when confronted by armed responders. A school shooting scenario, the t attacker seeks only to maximize casualties, with most occurring within the first 15 minutes. It is not feasible to follow a traditional hostage-type scenario and await a negotiator. In these situations, first responders who quickly and decisively close with the, the attacker may prevent further casualties, at the very least. It prevents the attacker from establishing control over the environment needed to cause more casualties. IARD overcomes the inherent desire to take time to devise a solution that minimizes casualties amongst officer and victims in situations where any delay causes further casualties. However, as many schools have developed lockdown protocols in the wake of incidents such as Columbine, the increased risk posed by immediate action rabbit deployment may become inappropriate in such cases where the venue itself has already contained the shooter's movements and reduced the number of exposed targets in their lockdown posture. Mass Stabbing A mass stabbing is a single incident in which multiple victims are harmed or killed in a knife-enabled crime. In such attacks, sharp objects are thrust at the victim, piercing through the skin and harming the victim. Examples of sharp instruments used in mass stabbings may include kitchen knives, utility knives, swords, axes, machetes, ice picks, screwdrivers, scissors, and broken glass bottles. Knife violence poses a high security threat to many countries around the world that have restricted its populace from carrying firearms. Examples 2014, the Kunming attack. A group of eight men and women attackers wielding knives launch a terror attack at the railway station in Kunming, China. 31 people were killed, 141 were wounded. 2016, Sagamihara, the knife attack, where a man attacks disabled persons at a care center in the town of Sagamihara, west of Tokyo, Japan. He killed 19 men and women and wounded 26 more during the attack. The killer was a former employee who wrote a handwritten letter to a Japanese politician in which he threatened to kill 470 severely disabled people and also advocated for a euthanizing bill for disabled persons. This was considered the worst mass killing case in Japan in decades. Japan has one of the lowest crime rates in the world, yet this still happened. Two thousand seventeen, London Bridge attack. Three men claiming affiliation to ISIS launched an attack on pedestrians on the London Bridge. First, the terrorists used what law enforcement calls a vehicle ramming attack. The terrorists ran over pedestrians with a vehicle that was swiftly followed by a mass stabbing attack carried out with cheap pink ceramic knives that were purchased before the incident. Eight people were killed and 48 were injured during the attack. It took law enforcement 10 minutes before they could effectively stop the attack.
2022, September 4th. 10 were killed and 28 people were stabbed in 13 different locations in the James Smith Cree Nation and also in Wilden, Saskatchewan, Canada. Some of the victims were believed to have been targeted by the killers, while the others are considered random targets or commonly referred to as targets of opportunity. Both attackers fled the area, and a manhunt by the responding law enforcement agencies then followed. Post-incident, the attackers, Damien and Miles Sanderson, died within days of their deadly attacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. You really did stab me right there. <laughs> 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 he broke the tin. The tin got smushed in. He really did broke me. That hurt. <laughs> I said I might accidentally jack yeah, in your ribs. All right. So for all you grapplers, raise your hand if you take jujitsu, right? For all you grapplers, who so the first thing you want to do is engage. When someone has a knife, you disengage. Get away from them. In American society, we brawl like men, like we're gladiators in a pit. You forget that not everyone plays fair. In early September of 2022, a brawl between 100 people with machetes broke out in East London. A 17-year-old male was stabbed to death, and an 18-year-old male also stabbed and was rushed to the hospital and is in life-threatening conditions. The incident occurred when uninvited people showed up to a party. During this phase of the training, we are starting to push these students to the next level. We are making them exert themselves more and continuing to monitor their basic techniques of slicing the pie, not tripping over their feet, basic fundamentals of marksmanship. Also, while you have the growing threat of being shot at back, this is when it got really interesting. We inserted different scenarios that forced critical thinking and decision making in split seconds. Barricaded suspect. Normally, a criminal suspect with known or unknown violent potential that has barricaded themselves alone in a structure and refused to surrender. Ample time for detailed planning and negotiations are needed. Persons are normally armed and there is a potential for a transition to an active shooter or hostage situation. Hostage situation. Similar to barricaded suspects, situation with the addition of innocent persons being held against their will. Provides law enforcement time for detailed planning and negotiations. Hostage situations can develop from active shooter situations or have a great potential to develop into them. Good to go. Next. Send it. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Keep going. Good. Finish clearing. Finish clearing. Left clear. Work clear. There's dead space. Center clear. Center clear. Center clear. Center clear. Center clear. Center clear. 
Let's go. Come on out. Next. Somebody, please. Help me. Somebody, help me. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. Help me. Lots of clear. That's not clear. Awesome. Work it. You can't feel like this. Center clear. I, I have one too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm putting more down if you need more. Next! And out of your workspace. There we go. Work it. Send it. Somebody please get in here! 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 Get in Nice. Way to do work. Come on out. Left clear! Clear, right clear. Finish clearing. Listen, look for work. Look for work. You're still working. Come on out. Send it. Get in. I need your help. Get in here. Get in here. He's killing everybody. He's killing everybody. Get in here. Get in here. Center clear. Center clear. Do work, bro. Do work. Natural. If you want to ask questions, too. So. Ready? <coughs> so, everybody hit center mass. Amazing. At least half made multiple headshots. That's awesome. And with the, the fog of war, with that, <coughs> the amount of smoke that was in there, I could barely see. Yeah. So when they went to penetrate the room, they start to pivot around the threshold. I can barely see because of the smoke, but I'm getting engaged in the deeper side of the room. Yeah. And I mean center mass every time. And I'm getting strafing hits. That's, yeah, those are pretty That's a pretty gnarly, gnarly one. Yeah, I got hit multiple times in here. Yeah. So that's a pretty good one. I hit in the neck. The most common place I'm, I'm <clears> getting <throat> hit whenever I first shoot and I take off the run is right there. Always. Always those right vulnerable there. spots. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's good because what it says, what it shows is that they're they're employing those super basic tactics. So yeah, having they're, never, they're point shoulder shooting. So never even having operated in some kind of sensory immersion type of environment like this are still hitting center mass so yeah. it's pretty impressive for the first run through i mean we you know we've got experience you know 15 years worth for me with carrying a gun for the government pretty much the same for you mm -hmm. working overseas and various different functions and there's a lot of guys at our caliber who still struggle with this yeah. what is the application for this type of training for guys like us for law enforcement yeah, the thing is, is like when you see even civilian-based training like this, I know we got a couple of Leos or at least former Leos in this class, is that 
they're overcome they're overcoming the physiology and and retaining their basics yeah. so like that's the big thing is that they're actually able to reduce their mind reduce the speed reduce the adrenaline it and was pushed through with basic basic function and it shows by rounds on target yeah. they're getting around i mean they're having 50 percent hit rate my name's chris Ferry. i work for mineral county sheriff's office i'm also part of their srt team so how do you like this training so far today it's absolutely fabulous it really is um from the get-go you start with the basics teach everybody the basics you're building everybody's confidence and not only one handling a weapon entering rooms clearing just being aware of your surroundings um and it shows 100 percent yeah from just within from yesterday to today everybody i mean it's it's increased everybody's confidence isn't it the increase in 48 hours is pretty impressive right. isn't it you yeah. know and uh what's your take as far as the the sensory immersion even you as an active duty leo working on a srt team yeah. um is it helping you overcome some of those different I, physiological I, responses that absolutely. you're prone to yeah um even though we train and we train often you still get complacent yeah uh, coming back out here it's it's like a refresher and you remember to do stuff that you'd forget about and you just you just quit doing it and i mean all, all this is it's 100 percent worth it every bit of it yeah awesome, when, when you first came through the room and the smoke started coming in was that disorientating it was yeah because i could barely see half of y'all but when you came through, I saw your profile and you actually like pied around the door slowly, trying to penetrate with your eyes into the door along with the sights. Now that is training. That is years and years of experience of the, training uh, teaching that. The smoke in there, for one, you can't see <clears throat> into the room, so you don't know what's in there. And um, unless you're prying it like you should and trying to enter it like you should, you're, you're running in blind. And, I mean, I think the biggest thing is when you do like full immer sensory immersion based training, you know, similar to this, we'd like to have a little bit more audio, you know, and stuff like that is that, is that you realize that the tactics trump anything else. So that's Absolutely. when you realize if I pie that door, I actually, it's amazing what I can see and I can get shots on target without having to expose Absolutely. myself, even through the fog of war that's going Absolutely. on. So yeah, taking, yeah, that's good. Taking care of the engagement from the hallway, man. That's the safest way to do it until mm -hmm. you have to make the penetration. <clears throat> and I really hope that smoke is like asbestos smoke or something because <laughs> it feels smoke. really good in my lungs yeah, right now. Well, I think he said he had some CS up there. <laughs> some, some nasty <laughs> stuff. But. Cool. Right. I noticed the one thing Jamie said, no matter how much the excitement starts speeding up, maintain your speed. Right. Well, that's, yeah. that's part of the biggest thing is even I do it, even though I've entered hundreds and hundreds of rooms, you get a little bit of adrenaline and you, you start speed up. up. Yeah. And and, and chaos just breeds chaos. Every time we train, yeah. no matter who it's with or where it's at, that's one of the things we're told. Just slow down. Just mm -hmm. slow down just a little bit. Uh, I've, I've entered rooms with, with teams before, and, you know, you're, you're grabbing on the back of shoulders and packs. Slow down, slow down, slow down. You know, keep on your sights. Keep looking, keep looking. Because we do want to rush through to find the target. And that's the most dangerous part because criminals hide everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, everywhere. And I think that's the most critical component about, you know, as realistic as you can get sensory immersion based training is that we all know that 90% of the fight is the mental fight, right? You can teach anybody to get rounds on target, even from awkward positions. You can teach somebody to hit center mass on target, but teaching them to have control of their faculties and their physiology, that's what's going to make the difference between winning the day or losing the day, you know? So yeah, good stuff. Doc, you got anything you want to add? No, they actually look really good. You're right. <coughs> These guys are maintaining good composure and and yeah, if you can train like you fight and keep in the realism cuz when you hit the when they, you know, if they have to do the real thing, then this realistic training is what makes a difference. So yeah, but chaos and I think I heard, you know, so the 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 smoke, the noise, you all, you know, your verbal mm -hmm. uh you know, just kind of making the environment realistic and help, help, move in here. Somebody help me. Yeah. So, but they're staying composed. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's good stuff. That one part, he had his hands up. He just, he just came in still shooting. Yep. So psychologically, can you explain that? Yeah. So that's one of the things that it's a perfect teachable moment because you get trained through flat range training that everything in front of you is a target. Engage it and you want to keyhole shots, right? 
it becomes marksmanship based training. But what guys aren't training to is to have the right situational awareness. And again, I know I keep abusing the word, but to control their faculties and their physiology to rightly identify targets, to be assessing at breakneck speed, all the different dynamics of what's going on in an environment. So you see the one guy come in the room and just engage him as he's standing there with his hands up. There's no reason. He's, no th he's literally standing there with his hands up, but, he, but he's training that everything in front of me is a threat, so you just shoot and get rounds on target. That's not true. It's a thinking man's game. And that comes with overcoming your fear, your natural fear response so that you can be an asset. I mean, that's, that's dangerous. And that's why we do this so, like you were saying, Doc, is that if somebody did actually need to be involved in, in uh, an active shooter situation, just any emergency situation, it won't be the first time that they've heard it. The first time they've seen it, the first time they felt it. That's the thing is it's not the first time, chances are they're going to end up performing pretty well and in, in, uh, being an asset. So. All right, that's all we got. Thanks, brother. Still pipe jam on my gun. First, second time. So, got to work through it. But, yeah, you guys did good. What do you guys have? Any critiques, questions, comments? I just want to say that. Who's up? Waiting on God. You never one ready? Dude, I don't know what's in this mask, but it's burning my eyeballs off. Was there something in it? Oh, no kidding. I wonder it's like a weird allergic thing well, to the foam. It was in a lot of my, my box equipment that had all my riot gear in it. Oh, that yeah, it's definitely CS gas. So it's, I mean, CS. it's a very familiar burn. Yeah. Doug? Sir? You ever find that battery? Yes, I did. Okay, where was it at? Oh, uh, it was in my pack. Okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't there, like I'm not finding it. No, sir. It's good. Send it. Slow it down. I muzzle truck. Get that in your workspace. Workspace. Higher. Higher. There you go. Work it. Look into the room. Get into the room. Get into the room. Get in the room. Looks like it. There you go. There you go. Why'd you shoot him? Huh? Why'd you shoot him? Come you tell me. No. You the reason why we hone in so much on simulations, we hone in so much on doing scenario-based training, what happens when we add a good guy in there and now you got multiple targets or you don't know who is the target. So, you know, when we start to add in different things, this is when it becomes the thinking man's game. So far, we haven't asked for anyone to use voiceful commands. For the next rotation, I want you to use commands. Obviously, guys, I'm the bad guy, okay? But if my hands are up, what should you be telling me? Keep your hands up, don't move. You can tell me to get on the ground, I'll get out on the ground. And do you have to penetrate the room if I'm down on the ground, faces on the ground, and you got a gun on me? No, you don't know who else is in there. Okay, so is it prudent to get in the room, to still clear, and to keep me on the ground? Can you do three things at one time? Yes. This is that training. This is when I talk about getting sucked into the corner, getting sucked into the room. You may put me down on the ground and there may be a second bad guy in there that you have to fight sleep. Okay, crawl to me, crawl to me. That's using your commands. So, you may be able to tell me, drop the gun. I may drop the gun. I may not drop the gun. I may rush at you without a gun on me. What are you gonna do? This is gonna be the thinking man's game next. So far, we have, we've gone through the crawling, we've gone through the walking, we're gonna start jogging now. I want you to start thinking, I want you to start giving commands. Are we opposed to putting ammo on this table and loading over here? I don't care what you do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how much time in between iterations when you said you're out here, you know, we're gonna shoot in between, about how much time is that that you're gonna be talking? Uh, probably about, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, and, and okay. you'll do that a few times or something. Yeah, that'll Talk be in between. Yeah, that'll be between all these volleys, like as you see. Yeah, because I'll, I'll be, I'll, you know, I'll just kind of be medical coverage um, yeah. well, in, while you're shooting, and then in between. Yeah, that's what I figured. So yeah. we're gonna start off with marksmanship skills. So we'll probably be on that for like 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to take, and then we'll do ready up drills. Uh, well, I, I want to run everybody through these drills at least four or five times. 
So, you know, after that, everyone's going to be, you know, punching mags, getting water, you know, taking a head break. So probably after this ready up drill, we'll have about 30 minutes. Cool. And then we'll hit the reload drills, uh, break for lunch, come back and finish these uh, last four drills, and then we're done. Cool. Cool. On today? Yeah, so today we're going to go through... Um, a baseline course of fire, which is going to get these guys equipped again. You know, my overused word to be a, to be an asset instead of a liability under stress. So we're going to do a crawl, uh, a crawl, walk, run, get these guys up to speed on some basic marksmanship and not marksmanship in the flat range sense of the word, but marksmanship and the ability to uh, deploy and employ their firearm in a way that's going to make them uh, productive under high stress. So that's the goal by the end of the day. Uh, that we're building on, on uh, now d almost day four of the shooting course, is to go to the live fire portion where we can actually get these guys to be operating their firearms with those basic principles to be able to have the good foundational framework to get rounds on targets no matter what's going on around them. So it's all about overcoming that physiology and uh, building in that resiliency to be an asset. So. Super basic marksmanship because maybe some of you haven't been on your pistols for a while. That's fine. That's why we're here, right? So we're going to go three, three yard line, five yard line, seven yard line, 10, 15, maybe push out to 25. We want you to work through a magazine at each of these respective yard lines. Good to go? That's what we're going to do. So we'll work through till it's time to reload. We'll bring in the next group, work through till it's time to reload. You guys can be swapping out reloading mags. And then we'll get everybody through this pistol course of fire. The goal is that after lunch, then we'll start transitioning a little no, bit course. more dynamic, a no, okay. uh, little bit more dynamic fire positions to up a little, up it up a little bit, and then we'll transition over the rifles. So when we're operating from the three and the five yard line, the important thing to remember is this should be shoulder point shooting. That's why we communicated so much yesterday about that that mid sternum. Punching it out, right? Because that's your ergonomics. That's the economy of motion. Economy of motion with the rifle. Economy of motion with the pistol to be able to come center mass, punch out. Even though you're looking over at your sights, you're at the three and the five yard line. You should be hitting center mass on that target without acquiring perfect sight picture, sight alignment. This is more reactionary type shooting, right? Instinctive, intuitive type shooting. That's what we want to get you guys used to. So from the three and the five yard line, we're going to start there. We're going to come out. You're going to engage the target. You want to reset, come back in. Remember, because this is where you're punching out from. Engage the target. We're going to work through a mag at each of the yard lines. You're going to work through at your own pace. Do not rush it. It's you training yourself. Good to go? We can only do so much. We will make little adjustments as we're walking the line. Safety as well, too. We'll be checking your shot placement. We can make adjustments on your grip. We'll make little adjustments on your finger placement. We'll be able to tell by your shot placement what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. May adjust your feet a little bit. So we're going to build our way up. Everybody tracking? Yes. Okay, so let's get the first group of four. And we'll come over here to the firing line. Okay. Stay in line with that stick. Go ahead and make ready, condition one. Watch your muzzle. Already. At your own pace, keeping good marksmanship shoulder, sternum shooting, intuitive shooting for one magazine at your own pace.
both eyes open, all right? So we're kind of doing that hybrid where we're transitioning from full-on instinctive shooting to a little bit more marksmanship is gonna be required at this range. You're gonna be firing one magazine, one magazine to completion, unload show clear once you slide locked to the rear, the instructors will come by and clear you. Everybody understand the course of fire? Yes. yes. Okay, good to go. Shooters, go ahead, condition one, make ready. Center, stand by. Ready, fire. Slow it down and try to bring your finger off and kind of engage one at a time. Okay, yep, just to build it. Sloppy, slow it down. You're just from, from compressed right? okay. And once we get through this first one, build a little bit of trust and okay. then we go. I got that. taking your arms and locking them. If you actually find that you are pulling to the left, all my right-handed shooters, except for the wrong-handed guy, if you're pulling hard to the left, here's an old trick. Take your thumb and stick it straight out. Straight elbow, straight thumb. That will go onto the frame of the gun, and as you go to fire, it's not going to move. Taking your elbows and rolling them together takes the top portion of your hand and pinches the gun together. So it behoove of you to squeeze with your lower appendages on the bottom part of the gun. Never even loaded. Unloaded? Unloaded. Okay. All right. I have a problem with this because I have way too big of hands. So I take my hands and I push them out just like this. This is how I hold the pistol. Thumb over thumb. Does everybody see that? Yep. Thumb over thumb. No teacupping. This isn't Charlie's Angels. If you put your thumbs <laughs> like this, do you know what happens when you start to shoot? If you rapid fire, your thumb is that close to the magazine well. Mm. You may accidentally drop your source of ammunition, causing a malfunction or worse yet. How many times have you seen that? A lot. <laughs> I know. I've I've seen it. A freaking lot. Guy shooting, magazine falls out. Or yeah. he didn't seat the mag well. Yeah. Here's one thing. When you go to seat the magazine, once again, guys, workspace. Where's my workspace? Everyone show me. Really? Workspace is right here. Mm -hmm. You should look through the gun at your target. Like, my target's right here. I can see that the entire time. This thing's like double, triple vision right now. I'm not looking. But I can do this all day long. Never look at my gun. You see what I'm doing? I'm not doing this. You, I had a lot of guys, for whatever reason, whenever they go to load, they do this. Oh, gosh. You don't have to do that. You don't have to suggest it to load the firearm. Just rack it back. And it's a slingshot backwards. Slingshot. Slingshot. If you do this, you can cause the gun to go out of battery. It can still load a source of ammunition, but it may not load the bullet all the way into the chamber. And that's when bad things start to happen. That's where you get major malfunctions. So, loading the firearm in my workspace, slingshot, come to my compress ready. <sighs> On sight, slow, steady squeeze, bang, still looking at my sights, finger off the trigger, back to compress ready. <sighs> so, 
slow, steady squeeze off the trigger. Got my second sight and back. That's about how fast you guys need to be shooting. If you're shooting faster than that, then that's not the drill. We'll get into the fast shooting here in a little bit. It's the confidence building for you and for us instructors to know that you're shooting the gun accurately and you're actually using the fundamentals of marksmanship. The basic fundamentals of marksmanship from a guy who is a special forces Delta to a guy who's on SWAT, the same guys at the very high caliber are using the basics in almost every single bit of training. The only thing that really makes these guys like stars in the world of the gunplay is they learn to take their shots a little bit faster and to be back on their sights smoother and faster. That's the real, real difference. All this other fancy stuff, it, it doesn't work in the real world when it comes to like combat because you're gonna be freaking flying magazines out and dropping stuff. You're gonna be kneeling and doing this the whole time because the adrenaline's gonna happen. The adrenaline dump's gonna happen. You're gonna make mistakes. But when you go to take that slow, steady squeeze shot, bang, or when you come through a room, I'm already working on the trigger. I'm already on my sights and I'm searching, bang. That is the portion that we need to start working on. It's just the trigger control, getting on your sights, proper hand placement, proper body placement, and being comfortable with taking the shot. That's the most important thing for today. Any questions so far? Everybody have water? I okay. brought you pee. Roger, thank you. All right. I'm here for you. Yeah, Second volley. Box. I have a box of Pete Light. We'll put it in your water and mix it up. You got straws? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Second volley. Go ahead and line up over here. Me and Jamie got to work on something, then we'll come see you. What kind of batteries do you need? Are you serious? What, what, do, you, what do you need? Triple, Triple A. a. You got some. Oh, okay. You yeah. got some? Yeah. Down here? Up in the parking area. Yeah, we were. We just need four of them. <laughs> I'll get you some. <laughs> we okay. scrambled through. I went through. Don't worry about it, Doc. Ruffling everything, but. You're shooting now, right? Yes. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll get you bit. over there. We'll keep rolling with what we got. We'll just be lined up then. Yes, sir. Let's see who we're going to get shot by today. Tony, what do you think so far? Shooting center mass. Okay. Shooter, stand by. Ready. Fire. Second round of sights on. Come back. All right. Mm -hmm. Drop, the mag. Drop mag. Re holster. Okay. Slide forward, re holster. Take your pistol. Oh. Hey, best way to take your pistol. Lean it forward. Nothing in the magazine. Nothing in the chamber. Drop the mag. Drop the mag from right here. Okay. You already have it. So if you retain the mag, put it in your pocket. Send the slide home and holster. Done. Okay. Go ahead and pick up your magazine. Listen, what I'm telling you is that when you go to press out the fire, okay, yeah. I'm getting my first sight picture on my sights. Yeah. Slow, steady squeeze of the trigger. Let the trigger shot surprise you. Bang second sight picture and then i come back in my eyes are on the target the yep. whole time i'm not looking down i'm not on, looking left and right this, this is just basic fundamentals here. i'm focusing is, on this yeah. take my deep breath in a good column, which is restart good. the entire firing control. process so it is, i'm punching out issue. slow steady squeeze so on my front sight bang i get my second sight picture front sight gun still where i want it come low. back in 
So it's slow, it's steady, it's so monotonous, but this is building that basic oh, fundamental. Oh, if you ever feel that these start going left and right, remember, yeah, take your hands, back. pinch a little bit, rotate the elbows up a little bit. This can be fatiguing. Mm -hmm. So after you shoot, come back in, relax the shoulders, move your shoulders around. Don't be stiff and robotic. Mm -hmm. This is natural movement. But other than that, good shooting. I noticed with your, when you're holding your gun out, you have a lot of shake in your hand. Heavy nicotine user. <laughs> a little yeah. coffee. A little little nicotine. Ni heavy nicotine user. So those are things to think about. So if, if uh, I mean, obviously there's going to be some degrees of it that are fatigued, but it also can be dietary based to have that much shaking, right? So I was like, what are my vulnerable? What are my critical vulnerabilities? What are my centers of gravity? My critical vulnerability is I have high nicotine, high caffeine intake. I'm going to have a hard time. What's that mean when you get further out? Right? You're going to start losing rounds when you get further out. So it's something to be aware of, of yourself. I'm, who am I to tell you what to do with lifestyle? But it's something to think about when you're carrying a gun concealed or when you're actively pursuing you know let's say an active shooter and situation the, your heart's pumping and, that, and so now so now that shaking magnify it by this okay yeah. uh, just something to be aware of for yourself so the whole the whole thing is then then you need pretty, to pretty, pretty train to that level right yeah, so you need to yeah. train to that level knowing that about yourself so yeah. just something to take into consideration yeah, if you guys are all all if you've already been checked go ahead and move back and we'll uh we'll move back the yard line these for you, but now I left my earmuffs up there. When I first back, I to get them after lunch. <clears throat> All right, guys, good shot groups. Uh, oh, one thing I was watching you miss is, yep. is uh, your your draw from the pistol. I mean, from your holster. Yep. So you went you went from here, bad grip, pulled it out, used your other hand, held the pistol, reset your grip, and then came here. So you. You have multiple manipulations of your weapon with both hands at the same time. So something to think, and this is good because these are things that you can do at home. These are things you can do without ammo. These are things you can do all the time. Is getting that good high meat weld, you know, on the dovetail, especially on a Beretta. They have really nice dovetails for that. To get that good high weld, where each time you're you're doing it and you're drawing, you're getting that good grip. It's already there. You shouldn't have to readjust it, and not to mention use your left or your right hand. I know you're the other way. <laughs> to readjust it in your hand to get that well. So yeah. something to be working on is, you know, the very baby-like steps, one, clearing the holster, two, and pushing out, right? So that's mm -hmm. something that you can work on at home on your own and build on that. So just something Thank to you. think about, okay? Any questions or concerns? All right, your next course of fire is gonna be from the 10 yard line. Give me two steps back. Okay. Ten yard line. Next course of fire is going to be from the ten yard line. Same thing. What's changing at this distance when we're talking about intuitive shooting? Not cleaning your gun and not keeping it lubricated can kill you. Everybody see what's in that? A bullet. Something. A bullet. Just so you guys know, I've fired squib. tens of thousands of rounds, and I have never once seen that happen. That's so, a squib round is what so it that's is. So yeah. that's a catastrophic failure yeah. right there. Probably no powder in the gun, and that's probably been discharged just by a primer. No powder in the charge. That's why I don't allow Was reloads. Because when you start doing yeah. reloads, homeowner, yeah, you don't know the level of proficiency of the guy reloading. And, you know, some people are reloading by hand. Did I put a charge in that already? And then they double charge it. Or they don't charge it. And that's that's what exactly what a primer alone will do. It'll push that bullet that far into a barrel. And then the next round goes in, and you have an exploding gun. That shit happens, man, with guns. I'm a gun. Working on basics and marksmanship. If you need to, I have a vice up there. Mama. And we can tap it with a hammer if you need to. That sucker is in there. Yeah. Ethan, go ahead and come over here, bro. I'm going to go ahead and go through the next course of fire. You want to take that up and tap it out? You might have to, Bob. I'd be like, uh, I don't think you get it I'd out be like, of there. I've the, never got Throw the like barrel that. away, buy a new barrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're $20. I would, because they have a little bit Yeah, no, it's not worth it. No, you, you got, you got the, yeah, the, what he said, damage in the lands. A more rapid succession of fire to be focusing on on your pistols. I'm oh, sorry. 
Front sight, what else? Trigger. Trigger reset. Trigger reset is what we want to hone in and in on with a drill like this. We want you to feel that trigger, lead, that little click, that little chunk. There's a little bit more of a chunk on an AR. The pistol is a little bit more of a click where you're not coming all the way off the trigger. You're not coming all the way out of the trigger wheel. You're not resetting your fingers, straightening out the trigger. This is successive fire and you're allowing, you're feeling for that trigger reset without losing your sight, picture sight alignment and without repositioning and losing your grip. So it's, it's fire, boom, trigger reset, boom, boom, feeling that trigger reset on two, holding, boom, 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 feeling that trigger reset on each one. You'll see how crappy your group start getting when we start adding in feeling for that trigger reset. But that's why we're training. We want to get better at recoil management, trigger reset, and not jacking with our grips and with our sight picture sight alignment. All right, hey, Jamie, so if I'm going to be leaving, so if the gentleman needs a handgun, he can use mine. Okay. So I'm going to hand it to you, Doug. It's in condition one. We have high alert, low alert, CQB alert, or something all you guys have been doing is the compressed ready. Low alert. This is like strictly like a range thing, okay? So my pistol's gonna be here. My pistol's not my face. This is literally for me to be looking, all right? This may be a time when you get out of your car and you have loaded your gun inside your car seat. Anyone ever do that before? Take your pistol out and it's right there, okay? This is low alert. Low alert only means I'm ready to fire, but my finger's not on the trigger and coming up. On these commands, you'll be given the command up. When you hear the command up, you'll go from low alert where you're searching with your head, all right, for the safety caution, you're not gonna be traversing with your pistol left and right. You're gonna be searching with your head. Targets are right down in front of you. Look at the target to your left of yours and the target to the right of yours. So searching, you're gonna hear the command up. That's it. Bring it up into your face and then all the basic fundamentals are being in play. We're gonna do one volley of that, one round. Then we're gonna do it again, and it's gonna be two rounds. So up, bang, come back again. Up, bang, bang, come back again. Up, bang, bang, bang. On the three rounds, take your time, don't slap the trigger, but don't take five seconds to take three shots. This gentleman has no idea what trigger reset is, just so you know, I, was, I was talking to him about it, so I don't know if he can demonstrate it. Let yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work with yeah. them on their end. We'll range. work yeah. with them. Uh, all right, so that's low alert. High alert. Anyone, everybody knows this is low alert now, right? What's high alert then? High alert's right here. All right, this is a, a big thing with the military and law enforcement. This is for searching. We're in the high alert. We're searching, but our gun's not up where it's in an obstruction of our face. So from the high alert position, Jamie or I will give the command up, bang, come back down. Up, bang, bang, come back down. Up, bang, 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 that's it. Then we have CQB alert or compressed ready. Compressed ready, your gun is in right here in your working space, in your face. This is for whenever you're moving it toward, uh, any, into any type of environment that's very tight or you're moving through crowds of people. If I move through crowds of people, my gun's not out here, right? Because someone's either going to take my gun, I'm going to bump into somebody and accidentally shoot them. Compressed ready is whenever you're right here and I need to move through targets of people. My gun is right here. This is the most precious thing on my body. I want to keep it. Compressed ready alert. You'll be given the command up. You've been doing this the whole time. This shouldn't be hard. When the command up is given, press out, give me one, then two, then three. Listen to the commands. After you give, after we give the command up, you will fire one round. You will come back. You'll be given the command up. Fire two rounds. Come back. Give the command up. Fire three rounds. Come back. We're going to do it from the three, then to the five, then to the ten, and then pushing back as far as possible. You will need to find your sights because this is a fast movement from here. This is going to be a fast movement. We've already done the crawling stage. It's time to advance. So from the low, all the way up to here, from the high, all the way up to here, and from the CQB, compress right here and out. Any questions? So we're gonna go and then as quickly as possible, acquire sights and fire, is that, is that what you want? Yes, you are quick on the draw, okay. slow on the sights. Okay. 
Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. From right here, I'm fast and then I'm finding my sights. If I just do this and shoot, I may not have my sights in line correctly. My eyes may not catching it. So fast on the draw, bam, slow on the sights, slow, steady squeeze of the trigger. This is about training your eyes to grab that front sight post. Grabbing that front sight post. Again, if you have to command your faculties while you're doing it, front sight post. Because you're gonna, you're intrinsically always wanna look at the target. You have to break the program into how your brain's naturally wired and just go front sight post. So a lot of times you're already finding it when you're about halfway out. It doesn't matter if it's from the low ready or from the high compressor, whatever. you're already finding those sights when you're halfway out. All you need is that little finished finesse before you have a good trigger pull. Did he go? Does anyone want a demonstration of this before we get started? Yes. Okay. Follow me. We'll do a demonstration. Force curse of fire will be high alert. Fired one round, then two consecutive rounds, then three consecutive rounds. On my command, up! Firing one round, then two consecutive rounds, then three consecutive rounds. On my command, up! Up! Next course of fire will be low alert. One round, two consecutive rounds, then three consecutive rounds. On my command, up! Of course, the fire was a 12 hour day. Yeah. But that's how we're used to training. Right. Yeah, you work through the whole thing till you're done. Yeah, there's no, there's no stopping. It's like you just gotta modify it, so. Yeah.